Good morning, everyone. Uh, Kevin with Flux here. Thank you for joining me today on our training on workflows. This training is a basic overview on what a workflow is and how the roles of your users relate to your workflows. In this Admin Basics Workflow Overview webinar, we'll be addressing the difference between profiles and roles, how roles relate to workflow, how to add a new state and select the category and state type, how to add transition buttons, how to handle allowed roles, some pointers about modifying the workflow, and lastly, what guard instructions are. If you should have any questions at any time during the webinar, please type it in the question section. We'll be dedicating the last few minutes for questions and answers, so we'll be saving all of your questions for them. If we do not get to your question in time, we'll try to curate those and answer them offline. Okay, so let's get started. First, let's define what workflow means on Flux. The workflow is the process that takes you from the beginning of the grant making activity to the awarded state. All requests, grants, reports, payments, organizations, projects, and amendments have workflows. Workflows reflect the current position of any given grant request along the grant journey. Internal staff members are able to move the request forward, backwards, or reject the entry. A staff member can only respond to a grant request when he or she has been credentialed to do so. So let's start with the front end on a grant request card. The status bar is often configured at the top of the record, as you can see here. Clicking on the green plus to the right of the status bar uh, makes it easy to take a quick look to see where any grant is in the workflow cycle. Here. Once you click on the green arrow to the right of the stat yellow status bar, a modal will pop up to view the entire workflow for the grant request theme. Note that these states will depend on the theme for which the workflow was built. The state highlighted in white, um, the state is highlighted in white to indicate the step in the workflow that the record you are viewing is in. In this example, the record is in the new state. Now, every workflow is made up of states and transitions. So let's go over some definitions. A state is a step in the workflow, essentially the particular position in your grant process. For example, the state in which a grantee is completing a grant request for the first time is draft. A transition or trigger is represented by a button and is the event or action that moves you from one position in the workflow to another. The transition button should be labeled clearly. For example, send back to grantee. We'll transition the record to the state back to the grantee state. Next, profiles and roles determine how a user interacts with the system and when they have edit permissions. All users who need to log in to the system are assigned a profile, role, and program. If a user can't get into the system, it may be possible that they were added manually and they may be missing one of those three things. Be sure to check the user card before contacting support. 
When setting up your Flux platform, you'll want to be sure to remember to distinguish profiles and roles. Now let's briefly touch on the difference between profiles and roles. Profile permissions are set up by Flux before an organization goes live. Profiles come standard on every site and some may have been created specifically for your needs. So profile types, however, are standard for all Flux systems and consequent roles are specific to each foundation. The standard profile types are board, consultant, employee, executive, grantee, and reviewer, and these standard profiles are used for all organizations. Please note, profiles are predetermined in the system and are built for you. You should not add any new profile types without first contacting Flux support. Now in contrast, you can add as many roles as you'd like. Roles are specific to your organization and determine who can take action, such as edit, update, or move a card forward and or backwards in the individual workflow. Let's see a request card from the perspective of an employee with an allowed role on a record in the system. The green transition or action buttons appear or do not appear depending on the user's role at each workflow state. When an action button appears on the card, it signals that the user is both the proper role and program permissions in that step of the workflow. As you can see here, I'm allowed three buttons at this state on the record. Now here are where, here's where roles are configured in the admin panel. Now typical roles are grantee, program assistant, grants management officer, program officer, finance officer, and president. These can vary from organization to organization, and again, you could add more roles. The great thing about Flux is that you could have as many roles as you want, and a person can have more than one role. So for instance, a program associate can act along with all the other program associates to move a draft to new request with the role of a program associate. But he or she can also have an additional role that allows him or her to act at another state in the process, such as finance officer or a communications associate. Let's take a look at how you'd assign this on a user card. When a new person is registered in your system, the default is to assign that user to all programs. However, you can limit a user to a specific program by limiting that user's role to one or more programs. So for instance, if a program officer is limited to program A, he will be able to change the status of a request that is in program B. It is important to note that a profile, a role, and a program must be assigned to a user or else they will not be able to take any action inside of the system. For a grantee to take action in the grantee portal, a relationship will have to have been established between the grantee and the organization at the LOI state. Then that user will need to be linked as either a primary contact or a signatory contact in order to have edit permissions. 
in this example, we have we have linked to test org one two three, which has auto filled all of the information. Note that anyone who has relationships to the organization will show up in the drop down, but only if the grantee user has been linked as either a primary or signatory contact will he or she have editing permissions. Next, we'll discuss adding a new workflow state. You can create workflows to follow virtually any path through your organization. Please keep in mind, however, that only an admin can configure your organization's workflow. To add a new state, simply click the new state sign at the bottom. Next, you will see the attributes menu populated over to the right. First, fill out the internal description. The internal description will be the back end field name. Then you will add an external description. And this is the label that the grantee will actually see. A helpful tip to take note of is that you can create, is that you can label the state here as whatever you would like the grantee to see. So for instance, if you have a grant competition and you want to notify the winners all at the same time, you wouldn't want certain applicants to know that, that their application is still in pending president's review. Therefore, you could modify the external description to simply state pending. Next, you'll then select the category. Categories drive certain behaviors and determine the action the state will take for that model type. For example, whether it will move forward internally or be sent out for external review or become a grant. Examples of categories for a request include draft, new, approval, rejected, pending grant promotion, send back, and granted. Each model type has its own categories. So for instance, when a request is granted, you must have the granted category. This moves the request from a request card to a granted card and, assign, and assigns a grant agreement date. Or when a request moves to an external reviewer for the review process, the pending external review category allows it to be accessed in the reviewer portal. So now we will add a state type. State types are the basic action types. The state types include workflow, new, rejected, and send back. New is the first state type used for a state. Every state type after that is considered a workflow type in the process. Rejected moves the rejected the rejected moves the request to the rejected state. And lastly, send back is only used if you have a separate send back state, which is a draft state. So if you want to send it to revisions required as a separate send back state, you aren't sending it back to draft. You're sending it to a holding spot where revisions are required before it moves ahead. It's very important to note that this state type is always used in conjunction with the stint with the send back category. And just as a heads up, state types work across the board with all models.
Next, you'll see allowed roles. You will see allowed roles here under states, but you will also uh, see allowed roles again in event transitions, which we will delve further into in just a bit. It's very important to note that these are not the same thing. Please note allowed roles under state should never be checked by administrators. Though labeled as such, they have nothing to do with roles and are for special profile roles only. If you check one by accident, the cards will disappear or become invisible to certain users. Notice that there is a warning here under this allowed roles um, to remind you to leave the allowed role selection empty. So now we will want to add transitions or buttons so that we can move from one state of the workflow to another. It is very easy to add a new button, um, but before you even get started, please note that you should add a workflow state first and then add your buttons to and from. By keeping your old buttons, you could now refer to them before you modify or delete them. This is especially important because guard instructions are tied to the, bot or tied to the buttons, so you wouldn't want to lose those instructions before copying them into a new transition button. So once you've done that, um, you are ready to add a new event transition by clicking the plus square that displays in the dark gray bar. Right there. As you'd seen in our previous slides, the attributes menu over to the right will populate with fields you must fill in in order to create the new transition button. So first, you'll want to add a transition button name. And the from state is always auto-populated. In to state, select what um, state the request is going to. Please note that every button has a relationship to user roles. The role or roles assigned on the button establish rights and permissions of who can and can't edit. It is important to note that you won't be able to save the transition button until you add the allowed roles. Remember that these are the same roles that were initially set up for you before your site went live in the user settings section. Now be very careful that you are in the right tab when adding or modifying roles, as I'll remind you here. As some users have accidentally added roles to the wrong section. You will want to be in the second tab to add a new role here. Well, let's go back to building our workflow. So as I mentioned before, you will see allowed roles and transitions. Unlike allowed roles in state, which shouldn't be touched, allowed roles for transitions or buttons have to do with allowed roles in your system and who can and who can take action and who can't. If you notice, the allowed roles here are in bold to note that they should always be checked. Lastly, guard instructions determine whether a button can be seen or not seen by a specific user, profile, role, or even individual, depending on whatever conditionality you would like. So for instance, if the grant request should go to the president for approval, if it is asking for a certain item, you can utilize guard instructions to do so. Guard instructions should be used carefully given how customized and complex the instructions can be and thus should not be put into place without the assistance of Flux support.
So before we end, I want to leave you with a few big pointers to keep in mind. Um, if you delete a workflow, it deletes it for all themes of that model type. So you want to be careful because if you delete it from any form with more than one theme, it's going to delete it from all of them. So for instance, if you had an arts program and an education program, and you deleted a workflow in the arts program, it would also delete it in the education program. This will also hold true for all other forms with multiple themes, including requests, reports, and reviews. Instead, what you want to do is to move the unused state to the bottom of the page and make sure you've removed all buttons. Here's a quick example. Here at the bottom, I have relabeled the external description to show that it has been retired and strip the state of any of its buttons. This will preserve the records in the state, but will not be a functioning state from this point onward. Now, if you do need to delete it, be sure to diligently go through every workflow and make sure no other workflow uses that state. I would also strongly advise that you make sure to modify your workflow on your pre-production site first and run through your process to be sure everything is working as you wish. And once you have it how you'd like it, you can then start the process on your production site. Okay, so this concludes today's webinar on workflows and I hope you enjoyed it. If there's any features I did not cover extensively, like the details on building workflows, uh, we'll be hosting trainings in the future to address these features. You may also learn about any of these features by visiting our knowledge base. So now let's open it up to some questions. Why can't I see rejected grants in the list view of my grants, even though it is a workflow state? Great question. The default is that um, the rejected state will be hidden from your list view. So to include rejected in your list view, you'll want to go into the action bar, open up your filter tool, and make sure you click the checkbox next to include rejected requests. Okay, next question. How many buttons can you have? So the great thing about Flux is that you could have an unlimited number of buttons and roles. Next question, how many workflow steps would you advise? Now, as I said earlier, you could have as many as you'd like, but I would advise that you keep it simple. Um, so remember how I mentioned that workflows in a model type are tied to all themes of that model type? So the more you have, the more diligent you'll need to be later when you have to make changes in your workflow. So we do suggest that uh, you keep it as simple as possible. Okay, another question here. I named something draft or pending review in the internal description, but now I want to call it pending authorization. Can I do that? Um, so yes, absolutely. Um, after the back end field name is established, you could always go back in and change the display label of the state's name. So please go in and change it now to pending authorization so that the label is what is visible internally. Okay, next question. I have a new employee and they can't edit and I know I gave them an allowed role. Um, you'll want to check to see if they have the proper profile role. Uh, so go ahead and check that as well. Okay, looks like this is the last question here. My buttons take two rows, what should I do? Um, so definitely think about shortening the names or abbreviating. Uh, for instance, program officer can be PO. So you could just say like PO review. Um, and that should make it so that the buttons stay in one row. Okay, that looks like that's the last question here. So we'll go ahead and call it for today. For any questions um, you have that were unanswered today, we'll provide you with resources on where to seek answers. 
Uh, we typically experience a high volume of questions. So you'll be able to find these video recordings and any continued Q&A on our knowledge base. So today we went over workflows. We learned the difference between profiles and roles, how roles relate to the workflow, how to add a new state and select the correct category, how to add a new state and select a state type, uh, adding allowed roles. We went over how to add a new event transition or button to the workflow, going from one state to another state. Um, we learned about adding basic guard instructions and modifying the workflow do's and don'ts and a couple of tips here and there. To learn more and access the video recording of this webinar along with any extended Q&As, please visit our knowledge base at flux.io slash knowledge. There you'll be able to find a list of our upcoming webinars, links to register for future webinars, and recordings of past webinars under training webinars. Or, of course, feel free to ask us at support and we'll be happy to help. Thanks again for joining us today, and we hope to host you again at our next training. Have a great day.